Before we begin, we've actually got a question from one of our subscribers, uh, from Mark. Uh, hello, Mark. Uh, the question is, I used the metal threaded rod for the wheel, and it seems really clunky and loud, or seems like the sound would get picked up by the pickups. Is that normal and okay, or should I start pulling stuff apart? Thanks very much for that question, Mark. Now, that is uh, definitely a good question to ask, especially considering we just built the uh, hurdy-gurdy wheel and put that in with the crank. Now, when you're putting uh, the threaded rod in, uh, it's obviously got threads on it, which uh, does uh, scrape inside the bearing. It is a good idea to put grease on the actual bearing um, when you're putting that rod in there. Also, the actual thread itself will uh, wear into the bearing itself and it won't make as much noise. Now, mine still makes a little bit of noise. Um, however, you've also got to take into consideration when we actually put the two strings on it. The strings will put a little bit of pressure on top of the hurdy-gurdy wheel, which also takes away some of that vibration that you're getting as obviously the uh, hurdy-gurdy wheel is spinning free wheel uh, in there. So it is going to make a little bit of noise and that is okay. It also adds to that clunky old wheel sound. Um, if you listen to Mark Corvin's actual uh, apprehension engine version two, um, you can actually hear when he's uh, rolling around or um, cranking the actual hurdy-gurdy, there is a little bit of uh, a squeaky sound happening from it. So all those little uh, elements of sound um, that you're going to get from this wheel is only going to add to that horror sound. Uh, you don't want it to be too clean. However, the metal one is adjustable. Um, that's why I'm using it. Um, and I've used it in my first version. And trust me, it does wear in. Uh, just put a little bit of grease on there and that should help. So hopefully that answers your question and everyone else's who's probably asking the same question as my hurdy-gurdy wheel making way too much noise. If it's making too much noise, make sure it's not too tight. You've got to make sure that the uh, bolts aren't too tight on the actual bearing. So hopefully that answers your question. We're going to get into this tutorial now. We're actually going to start making the guitar necks. Yes, I can hear the excitement in your voices. You're all happy about that. We're so close to finishing this box. I'm not joking. Once we finish the guitar next, we're going to uh, make a few adjustments uh, by adding, uh, obviously, the hole for our soundboard, putting our necks on there, and then finally starting to uh, put our wiring in there. So let's get into this tutorial. So this is what my crank sounds like at the moment. There's a small amount of noise coming from it, but don't be too stressed. So let's get into the necks. So first of all, we've got two bits of wood there, hardwood. Now the sizing of them are, 65 millimeters by 18 millimeters, and I've got a 1.2 meter uh, strip of hardwood. The other one is, uh, you can't see all of it, but it's actually 40 millimeters by 18 millimeters. And uh, it's a little bit uh, narrower, uh, but it's still 1.2 meters in length. Now I'm using hardwood for this build on the necks. You want it to be hardwood, uh, otherwise it will bend. Another option is uh, you can uh, half the thickness of it and have hardwood at the top and obviously pine at the bottom. But this is how I'm doing my neck. Um, you may want to build it differently. So let's go to the first measurement. Uh, it's gonna be uh, 23 inches. Uh, in length, which is just shy of 59 centimeters. So just if you're going to be using centimeters, uh, cut it around that length. That's fine. It's okay if it's out a little bit. I'm going to do a bit of movie magic. So we're obviously going to cut that. So there we go. The uh, piece of timber is now being cut uh, at that length. Now we're going to move on to the smaller neck. So we're going to call this the smaller neck from now on. Uh, and the measurement for that one uh, is... 19 inches, otherwise cut it to around 48 centimeters and you'll be fine for that. So again, I'm gonna do a little bit of a uh, movie magic and uh, do a uh, little effect shot where I just simply swap the timber out and made it look like I cut it with my hand. But all I'm gonna do is obviously cut that. I'm not gonna show you how to cut it because I've showed you how to cut timber before. So there's our part, it's been cut now. And uh, so don't throw away any of the timber. Uh, because we're going to be using that. So now we've got these two parts. We've got the thick guitar neck and our narrow guitar neck. So we're going to move on to the off cut now of the small guitar neck. That's that thinner hardwood piece. And we're going to uh, make two more measurements on that. And the first one is going to be at 15 inches uh, in length. And the other one, we're going to set it at eight inches. Now, the reason we're doing that is these are going to be the supports that sit under the neck and assist in making sure that the necks don't twist or bow when we're using them. So obviously, I'm going to uh, measure them up. And once I've measured them up, I'm going to use a square just so I can make the mark and obviously make sure that our lines are nice and square. 
Now don't throw away that last bit of timber that you can see at the bottom, you'll need to keep that. So I'm gonna cut these and here they are, they've just been cut. So now we've got uh, two parts which will be used underneath the actual guitar necks. I'll just show you approximately their placement underneath and we're gonna make some adjustments to them, obviously. We're gonna do some more cutting of them, but that's where those parts will sit. So we've cut all our parts now uh, for our guitar necks for strengthening them. Um, so let's uh, make our next cut, which will be uh, giving a 45 degree angle uh, to the tip of our timber. But we're gonna work on the large guitar neck now. So I've put the other two parts away. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my square. On the square at the very end of it, you'll see there's a 45 degree angle and it's about adjusting a little nut there and sliding our rule that's on it tightening it up and then uh, you use that to actually make a perfect 45 degree angle line which will allow us to uh, make that cut. So I'm just going to uh, use that as you can see and this is uh, mainly just to make it look prettier uh, than what it is instead of being totally square. So I'm going to cut that piece off and there it is all done. So that's the part now you can sand the corners off. I'll show you a little bit later on what I will do with mine but this is how it's going to look. So now that that's done, we're going to be moving on to the small neck, uh, lower support, I guess you could say, and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm going to measure my 45 degree angle at the very corner, just to make it uh, look more pleasing and not so sharp. Um, and uh, then I'm gonna cut that, and then that part is now complete. So again, we can sand it down, uh, not on the leading edge, which is touching the wood. You can uh, obviously sand the rest of it, if you want to take those edges off, uh, I'm going to do that anyway, but I'll show you, um, uh, not spending too much time on it, but I'll show you what mine looks like when I've done it. So if you want to replicate that, you can do that. The next part, we're going to move back to our thick leftover wood. So not the neck itself, um, but what we're going to do is measure the depth of our box from the corner. Now mine is uh, sitting at five inches. So mine is five inches deep. Yours should be the same because the measurements should be based on the same. So we're going to uh, cut a small piece uh, from our thin scrap timber, which will be used for the narrow neck. And I'm going to also make one that is five inches on the thick piece of timber, which is going to support our thicker guitar neck. So oh, or our wider guitar neck. So I'm going to make that mark. I'm going to use my square, obviously, and mark that up. And then I'm just going to cut that piece of timber. So here it is here. So now I've got one thick piece in five inches and one thin piece in five inches. And these are the parts that will go up against the side of our apprehension engine and help support our guitar necks. And that's where their placement will be approximately. So what we need to do as well is we need to measure the thickness or the depth. I've got four inches on the top part. So again, uh, we've got the side, left-hand side of the uh, apprehension engine and our support that we put for the guitar necks. That's four inches in length or in depth. So what we need to do is make a measurement from the corner of the thick. So we're gonna work on our thick guitar neck now. And uh, I'm going to make that measurement from the far right hand side to the middle. And you can see this is approximately the placement of those parts that we've just cut. So in here is going to be our four inch measurement. So I'm going to obviously get my ruler. I'm just gonna recheck. It is definitely four inches. I'm going to make my mark there and I'll do that now. So I'm going to draw that up, obviously using uh, the square to make sure it's nice and square because we need to make sure that this part is a perfect alignment. So I'm going to make that mark with the square again. Now I'm gonna move this piece of timber uh, into the vise now and uh, you can see the four inch line that I've made the marking on. And what we need to do is measure our depth of our timber. I'm going to cut mine in half. Uh, so I'm going to uh, measure the top and the bottom and uh, put a mark right in the middle and that'll give me a guide to where I need to uh, put my marking. So I'm going to use this tool again um, in order to scrape the line perfectly along the uh, leading edge of the part. So I'll go down one side. You'll see the scrape mark there. Uh, obviously at the end as well, and I'll do the other side, and that way I can see uh, where the actual line is and where I need to remove the material. 
So we're going to be using a chisel to do this. If you haven't used a chisel before, or if you don't mind taking your time cutting it, use a saw. Um, but I'm gonna show you uh, using an actual chisel. So I'm going around now with a lead pencil uh, where the actual marking was scraped in to the piece of timber in order to make sure that that mark uh, goes all the way around. So I've got that guide of the line to make sure I'm not going too deep while I'm chiseling the part out. So if you're not gonna use a chisel, you still need to make sure that you cut the top part. So we're gonna move on to that. I'm just showing you the part of the material that we're actually removing off the actual guitar neck. So I can see here, we've got our line, it's nice and perfect, and we're going to make our cut up the top. So I'm gonna use an, a scrap piece of timber just as a guide to start the cut with. I'm using a handsaw, obviously. And I'm just gonna take my time and make sure that I'm going to cut straight. So as I start to lead the cut in, as you can see, I start to uh, make the saw more flush at the top. So I'm scraping the top of the line until I'm starting to cut all the way down. I'm not gonna go further than where that actual mark is. And you'll see what I mean as I'm cutting the actual scrap piece of timber off. When you're making a cut like this, take your time. It's not a rush and it's definitely not a race. What you wanna do is keep on moving down bit by bit, checking the front and the back to make sure that you're not going below that line that I've drawn on my piece of timber. And I'm gonna keep on sawing down. And as I get closer to the line, I'll keep on checking and go slower and just make sure that I'm not going to cut past it. If you cut past that piece, if you're using a chisel, the chisel will actually have a tendency to start taking out more material closer to uh, where that cut line is and we don't want to do that. So I'm checking both sides. I need to go a little bit more. Again, this is not a race. It's about taking your time with this part because if you cut too far, then there's a good chance you're gonna have to get another piece of timber and uh, redo this again so once you've done that and i'm happy with that i'm going to use a chisel now i've sharpened my chisel so make sure that you do have a sharp chisel when you're cutting and what we're going to do is remove that top part and lift it up like so so i'm going to take my time with this chisel make sure that it, that you don't put the chisel there is a particular way you, you cut so you make sure that that beveled edge is facing up so that way the timber lifts up and what I'm gonna do is I'm slowly, I'm just gonna line it up just above the line and gently tap it, keeping the chisel square. And then I'm going to slowly move around that line. Now, because the way the grain is with this timber, it will lift the timber up as we're cutting it. So um, again, sometimes when you're cutting with a chisel, it's not the cleanest of cuts. Um, so just be mindful of that. If you do not have a chisel or you do not want to use a chisel, that is okay. Use a saw. It will take a little bit longer, obviously, to make the cut, uh, but your cut will be a lot more uh, cleaner than what this is going to look like. Obviously, I'm going to sand it, but we're going to go around the edges now and just line it up on the line and just gently tap it. And you'll see the timber's already starting to lift a little bit as we're doing it. Now, just to... Uh, a little bit of a safety tip as well. Uh, if you're under 18, do not use this. Make sure that you are um, supervised or have somebody that will assist you in doing this if you are using a chisel. Also, you'll notice that I'm actually making the uh, chisel marks and hitting the chisel toward myself. That's actually a big no-no. Don't do that because if I slip, I will cut myself with it. Um, so again, that is not something that uh, is a really a good safety measure. Um, especially where your wrist is. You don't want to slice your wrist with a sharp instrument like this. So I'm doing this for the tutorial and I've also used chisels for a very long time now. Uh, so just be mindful of that if you're doing that. Now, as you can see, now that I've gone around the piece of timber with it and I'm slowly tapping it, it's moving the chisel down and it's actually lifting that part of the timber up. So I'm going to keep on working my way around that part and as I do, you'll see that the timber is going to uh, lift up 
And I'm just going to finish it off with a saw just to make sure I get those last little bits. And that's that part taken out. So you'll see it's a little bit more messier than it would be if it was with a saw. Um, however, I'm just going to hit it with the sander and the sander is going to make it nice and smooth. So that is how you cut that piece out with a chisel. Obviously, I'm using my electric sander because it's quicker. So we need to make sure that this part is flush. It's going to be turned over. It's going to be bolted on top of the soundboard, so you won't see underneath it anyway. But you need to make sure it's flush so it sits nicely against that soundboard. So sanding is going to achieve that. And this is where it's going to sit. As you can see, it's nicely lined up. We've got the four inches there um, and it's in half the half depth. So it allows it to drop down a little bit. Um, the reason we do that is because we don't want it to sit too high. Now I'm just going to make a mark in the middle of where the two bracings are. So when we bolt it down, I'm going to know approximately where the center of those parts are. So just make that mark um, on there. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue our bracing on. So this is the part that's bolted on, obviously to the side of the apprehension engine box. It's the same thickness as the guitar. So it's just a matter of obviously putting some PVA glue down um, and then uh, putting two nails in. Now, as you can see, I've already uh, pre-drilled uh, two nails um, in and I'm um, just tapping them down. It's exactly the same method as I've used previously um, when we were building our uh, framework for the apprehension engine. So these are skills that you've already picked up. And I'm just lining it up and uh, knocking it in place so it's nice and square. And obviously I'm going to make sure that that part is uh, flush with that join. And it is, as you can see, and I'm just removing any excess glue. Next part is we're going to put our bracing in. And again, this helps to stop the guitar neck from twisting or lifting up on the apprehension engine. And all I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a mark. So I'm going to measure the thickness of the guitar neck. I'm gonna work out where the center is. And then there's a little secret I'm going to show you, which is really not a secret at all. Um, but what it is, is we're going to drill straight through from this side, allowing us to figure out where the actual center is on the hole so we can put our nails in. So I'm just marking three locations. So I've made uh, three markings and then I'm going to measure them. Make sure that the measurements are, are the same. So I'm looking at around uh, uh, 10 centimeters. I think that's in centimeters on that side. Um, but it's about just making sure that if you're wanting to make it so that it's nice and clean, that you've got an even spacing in between where your nails are going to be. So I'm just rechecking again. Um, I can see I've put my uh, markings a few millimeters uh, incorrectly. So I'm just going to drill off to the side of that. But as you can see, um, by drilling on one side, it's going to put the hole through the other side. So make sure that it's nice and flush when you're doing it. Um, if you've got a drill press, use that because obviously it will make it nice and square all the way through. Uh, but I'm showing you, you can do this with a hand drill. So I'm just re-checking the measurements again. Again, I've uh, out a few millimeters, which is why I'm not drilling directly on where the hole is, just off to the side of it. Um, but obviously, if you measure it correctly, you won't need to do that. If I flip it over, you will see uh, that we've got the three holes on the other side so that we can actually put our nails in. Um, and there they are there. Perfect. So all we need to do now is put our PVA glue on the leading edge that touches the material. So we're going to get our support. I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way down the middle of it. And don't forget to do the uh, other edge as well, which uh, touches up against that wooden block. I'm uh, doing it off camera um, and, and that pushes in and you can see the glue coming out on the side. So I've definitely done that. And then once you've got it there, make sure you use a ruler just to make uh, the measurements, make sure that there definitely is nice and centered on both sides. So the measurements should be the same. Once you've done that, if it's not, make some minor adjustments. I've had to make a few minor adjustments there, as you can see. And then it's just a matter of turning the material over. And then we're going to uh, start to put those nails in. Now, those nails are the same ones that I've been using for building the apprehension engine. So they're the same ones that you should already have. Uh, they're the same ones that we use for building the framing. So there they are there. I'm just going to flip it over now. And because I've already pre-drilled, again, the drill, 
that I used is not thicker than the nails. We don't want them to be uh, something that you can push easily all the way in. You still need to hit them through. But the uh, pre-drilling the nails allows the nails to nicely go straight into the material. It also helps them from stopping to bend. So I've put one in and now I'm using the other one just to make the adjustment. Check it once more just to make sure it's all nicely lined up. And I'm happy with that. So uh, by putting the second nail in, it's gonna lock it into place. And then I can uh, hammer the rest of the nails in. So again, we're gonna have three nails on the larger or the wider guitar neck um, because we've got a longer uh, piece of material underneath it. And then once we've done that, obviously, we're gonna go around the edges of it with a rag and clean up all the uh, leftover PVA glue that's come out. So I'm using an old T-shirt. And once we've done that, we've now finished our neck for the larger part. Um, so that's got our, um, and when I say finish it, we've uh, finished putting our supports on there. And that's it there. I'm just gonna check it. I'll see where it sits. Gonna be the one for our hurdy-gurdy wheel. So that one's ready to go. So in the next tutorial, we are going to put together, using the same methods, a smaller neck. So I'm gonna go through that. It's gonna be a quicker tutorial than this one. This one obviously is run a little bit over time than all the other ones. Um, but we will finish that in the next tutorial. The next tutorial I'm hoping to release shortly. Um, I don't wanna leave too much of a space in between these two. So that way you can at least get both of your necks done, ready to go for the apprehension engine. So if you want to become a Film Master Subby, it's pretty simple. You can subscribe to my channel. You can like me on Facebook and or on Twitter. Until next time, don't just film it, master it.